we're now going to continue looking at list methods and we're going to begin by looking at methods that allow us to remove things from the list. And so as with last time, let's start with a list that has some items. So maybe a couple of integers and again maybe the word cat and maybe a boolean and perhaps another occurrence of two. And so I've got a list with six things and the easiest way to think about removing something is sort of the opposite of the easiest way to add something. The easiest way to add something was to append it to the list, to add it at the end. The easiest way to remove something is to remove from the end. And we call that method pop. And so when I ask the list to perform its pop method, the pop method by default will remove and return the last item of the list. And so when I hit return, the Python shell responds with the value 2, but in addition, my list now is one item shorter. The very last 2 has been removed and returned to me. So pop automatically returns and removes the last item of the list. However, it's also possible to ask the pop method to remove and return any value as long as I give the index. And so, for example, let's say that I wanted to remove the value 5 from this list. Well, 5 is at position 1 because the positions start at 0. So if I say my list.pop, the item at position 1, then 5 is returned. And now if I look at my list, I can see that now there are only four items. The five has been removed. It was returned to me. And now I've got two, two, the string cat, and the boolean false. So pop, although it sounds strange in terms of the name that it was chosen, pop simply removes a value by giving a position or by default by using the last position. Now that pop method is very similar to another method called remove. And so if I say my list remove, I wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to take something out of the list, but now the removal of an item has to be done by providing the item itself. So if I say I want to remove the word cat from my list, then notice that nothing gets returned. The pop method returned the value that it removed from the list. The remove method simply takes it out. And so when I say remove cat from the list, the method simply takes the list, finds cat, gets rid of it, and leaves the list with one fewer item. It's important to realize though that if there is more than one thing that matches the item, for example now we have two occurrences of the item too. If I say I would like to remove the item 2, which one does it remove? Or does it remove all of them? Well, it turns out that it actually just removes the first occurrence of the item that it finds. In order to see that, maybe what we should do is insert an additional item between the two occurrences of the item 2. So let's insert at position 1 the value cat. So let's put cat back into the list. Now it's going to be in between those two integers. Now we'll remove my list dot remove the integer 2. And what we'll find is nothing is returned, but now cat is the first thing because the first occurrence of 2 was taken out of the list. So pop will remove by position, remove will remove by item, but it will only remove the first occurrence of that item as you look from left to right. One of the other things that we can do with lists is we can ask the list to change itself based on order. However, in order for this to work, the order of the values 
has to be, in a sense, assumed either by position or by value. So for example, one of the methods that we can use is called reverse. If I ask a list to reverse itself, nothing is returned, but now the list has the values as before, but in the opposite order. So reverse changes the positions of the values according to their position. The first position becomes the last, the next becomes second to last, and so on. There is another method that will change the ordering of the items. It's called sort. However, the sort method requires that the list contain items that are all able to be compared to one another. So, for example, our current list has things that cannot be compared. Booleans and integers and strings can't be compared to each other. So I would not want to be able to sort this list. In fact, if I try to sort this list, it's going to tell me that it can't do so because there are types that can't be ordered against one another. But if I create a new list, maybe just a list of integers, and those integers are currently not ordered, if I now ask your list to perform the sort method, again, nothing is returned, but your list is now sorted. And notice that occurrences of the same item are simply sorted next to one another. So sort can be used to rearrange the items according to an ordering. Reverse will rearrange the items according to the position where the items were. Reverse can simply use any list. Sort requires that we provide an inherent ability for the items to compare themselves.